from Washington, this is VOA News. In the Zimbabwe elections, Mugabe has proclaimed winner. The MDC party contests and the U.S. embassies to close under threat. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. Elections are complete in Zimbabwe, where longtime President Robert Mugabe has extended his 33-year rule, being declared the winner of Wednesday's presidential election. Mugabe Robert Gabriel of Sanu PF party is therefore declared duly elected president of the Republic of Zimbabwe. That's Rita Makarau, chairman of Zimbabwe's Electoral Commission, announcing Mugabe received more than half the number of votes cast in the presidential election. The commission said Mr. Mugabe won a new five-year term with 61 percent of the vote compared to 34 percent for his longtime rival, Prime Minister Morkan Shangirai. Shangirai's movement for a Democratic Change Party is denouncing the presidential and parliamentary vote as a huge farce. The MDC totally rejects the 31 July election. He said the MDC party has vowed to challenge the results in court. He is determined to pursue peaceful, legal, political, and constitutional and diplomatic remedies to resolve this current crisis. More details at voanews.com. The United States is shutting down more than 20 embassies and consulates Sunday and has issued a worldwide travel alert for U.S. citizens about a possible al-Qaeda terrorist threat. The State Department said Friday the potential for terrorism is particularly strong in the Middle East and North Africa. VOA's Jeff Selden has more from the State Department. The new travel alert from the U.S. State Department is based on intelligence suggesting al-Qaeda or affiliated groups may be plotting attacks on official U.S. targets, American businesses, or any other place where Americans gather. The alerts in effect for the entire month of August. The State Department is urging Americans in other countries, especially those in the Middle East or North Africa, to take every precaution and, quote, to be aware of their surroundings and to adopt appropriate safety measures. Recent terror attacks by al-Qaeda-linked groups have included a wave of car bombings that killed dozens of people in Iraq. Jeff Selden, VOA News, the State Department. Egyptian military chief Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has strongly criticized the United States for refusing to, expli to explicitly endorse his ouster of Islamist President Mohamed Morsi last month. In a rare interview granted to a foreign news organization, an angry Sisi told the Washington Post that the Obama administration, quote, turned its back on the Egyptians and they won't forget that. Unquote. The comments, published Saturday, were made as Washington attempted to remain neutral in Egypt's political crisis between the Sisi-backed interim government and the Islamist supporters of the ousted president. Moderate Muslim cleric Hassan Rouhani has taken office as Iran's seventh president, succeeding Mahmoud Ahmadinejad as the country's highest elected official. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, endorsed and confirmed Mr. Rouhani's presidency Saturday at a formal ceremony broadcast throughout Iran and abroad. The president's public inauguration before parliament takes place on Sunday. Suicide car bombers have attacked the Indian consulate in Afghanistan's eastern city of Jalalabad, killing at least nine people and wounding 20 others. Officials say many of the casualties were in an adjacent mosque, New Delhi strongly condemned the attack, saying it highlighted that the main threat to Afghanistan's security and stability stems from terrorism. Tens of thousands of people are still waiting to return home from camps in eastern Burma after days of heavy rains triggered massive flooding that forced many to seek temporary shelter. Ron Corbin reports for VOA from Bangkok. The flooding has badly affected Burma's southern Kayin, also known as Karin, and Mon states, leading to the evacuation of over 33,000 people into 79 relief camps set up by local authorities. 
The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says key items in need are food, sanitation and medical supplies. Many of those affected have lost homes and crops. Burma's Meteorology Department says while the rains have abated, they are forecast to resume in the coming days, especially in southern Burma, where they warn water levels are again expected to rise. Ron Corbin for VOA News, Bangkok, Thailand. In China, workers have completed construction of the world's second tallest skyscraper in Shanghai, the country's commercial hub. The final beam was hoisted to the top of the 632-meter Shanghai Tower on Saturday. For all the latest, visit us at voanews.com. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from the VOA, VOA News Center.